Hey everyone, today's show is all about the question, is a real estate CRM just a glorified address book? We're going to talk about some integration and context benefits that you receive from a CRM that you won't get in the address book that actually give you a competitive advantage. And most importantly, at least to me, it's going to enrich your professional relationships. Sound good? All right, let's go for it. Welcome to the Aegis Martech podcast. I'm your host, Chris Chiotti with Aegis Martech, and the goal of this podcast is to empower and provide resources that build up tech-enabled small business owners who can confidently leverage their business software to generate more revenue, gain a competitive advantage, and enrich their professional relationships. All right. All right. So today we're going to talk about is a real estate CRM just a glorified address book? A lot of folks think that. And I mean, have we in the MarTech industry, have we done a good job informing small business owners and real estate agents, the benefits of a real estate CRM, how it can positively impact their business, help them generate more revenue give them a competitive advantage or enrich the relationships that they have with their prospects, their leads, their clients in the sphere. I think that's up for debate. Um, that's definitely one of the challenges out there. And just speaking, frankly, I that's, you know, what I see is one of the reasons for such a low adoption rate. People just don't seem to see the perceived value in a CRM. Now it's not true by any stretch of the imagination, I should know because digital transformation changed my life. You know, yeah, I know I'm, it may, you can say I'm up here on a pedestal and I'm preaching from the pulpit, but I'm telling you, it really did change my life. And you're going to hear me say that a thousand times. The reason I'm here today doing, you know, able to do these podcasts and then do this other thing and do this other thing is because of digital transformation. Just not to just not to geek out too much just because of, of the of the efficiencies and and, 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 and and productivity the time saved by digitally transforming my business yeah i mean it, it it changed it changed my life but as far as you know is it just a glorified address book that's a legitimate question because to those who are unaware the presumption is, look, I, I could keep a name, a phone number, a birthday anywhere. I can keep that information in my phone. I've got a contact manager in there. I can keep it in, in MailChimp. I can keep it in my in my in my email reminders. Um, I can understand why someone who has not experienced digital transformation would say that, would see that. Whose fault is it? Again, we in the MarTech industry, have we done the best job? Especially when, I mean, when it comes to small business owners, I mean, the enterprise folks get it. The enterprise folks do it. And that's not to say, you know, we as business owners, as small micro business owners or medium sized business owners should always do what the enterprise companies do, because I don't necessarily believe that because our, our economics are different. You know, at the enterprise level, they're, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those folks are playing with Wall Street money, you know, versus small business owners. We're actually playing or, you know, with we're using real money when we invest or send a dollar out. We need that dollar to come back and bring some friends with it. You know, <laughs> absolutely. You know, we don't have like this endless Wall Street money and, you know, you can borrow endless, you know, money from the Fed at 0% interest rate. You know, we, we, we don't have those, those luxuries in place. So those companies can afford to spend a ton of money on technology. Whereas we, as business owners, you know, we have to watch our numbers and watch our economics. So someone would say, Hey, yes, it costs money. And even if it doesn't cost a ton of money, it still costs time and time is money. So. Am I investing time and or money for a glorified address book? 
the answer is no. So the first thing I want to talk about was like how a, a CRM, a real estate CRM links and integrates like all your communications. So regardless of the channel or where you're, uh, you are interacting with your prospects, your clients, could be website, could be social media, could be email, could be text message, phone call, whatever it is, you have all that there in their contact record. If I open up my phone and I look at my contacts that comes with my Android phone, yeah, you know, I have folks basic information on there, you know, in there. But I don't have anything that has to do with all the emails like right there that I can view within a contact record. I don't have everything as far as our social media interactions. I don't have um, all the documents, access to all the documents from them. I cannot see where they've been on my website, what pages as a real estate agent. You know, if a client says, hey, I'm looking at Brookwood, that's a place here in Atlanta. And you see that, you know, of recent, of late, they've been, you know, browsing Cabbage Town. You know, shout out to my good buddy, Robbie Harris down there in Cabbage Town, the king of Cabbage Town. So you, that may cause you to kind of maybe if they're on a drip campaign or you're selling them a, a, a market updates for Brookwood. Well, you see, they've been looking at Cabbage Town for the last two weeks. You may want to switch things up or that may prompt you to just go ahead and you know give them a phone call so all that information all that interaction is linked and it's right there and you have like a 360 view you see everything you're like the all-seeing eye you know you can see all right there in the contact record unlike what you can do what's available to you in you know, so the, the really good contact managers or platforms you may get, you may use for email or social media. Those are all still still databases, but you have far more transparency or far more visibility, um, far more insight, um, uh, um, far more data that you can take and knowledge that you can take action upon within a real estate CRM. Then let's talk about like far as a competitive advantage so i'll just stay with the same example if your competitor we're again we're talking about the prospect or lead who's no longer looking in this part of town but looking in that part of town and as we know they may not just visit one website they may be getting correspondence or feedbacks from a couple agents you know they may be visiting several websites and then somebody picked them up on google with a keyword and they filled in the form so somebody else is sending them something so you're out there competing with a couple of folks trying to get this buyer you know or this seller slash buyer the selling and buying so whereas um your competitors aren't using a crm they don't have that insight. They don't have that that data to see that your customer has pivoted. So they're going to pivot their communication too. They're still communicating with them as if they're still looking in Brookwood. Whereas you've pivoted and now you're having conversations with them and you're doing research based on their most recent activity. And if something pops up that they need to jump on, go have a look at, um, you're right there. You're first up to bat. And your competitors are just, you know, they're just, you know, they're still whistling Dixie and as if everything is still the same because they haven't, they don't have that type of insight that you gain by having um, that feature that you only get within a real estate CRM. And something else as far as competition wise is when you, when you have everything all those communications all those documents all that insight in one place and your your competitor has it spread across post-it notes notes in their phone notes in their reminder notes in their calendar in their calendar on their phone notes in this social media uh account notes here notes there while they're th thumbing through trying to find a note a bit of detail on that lead, on that prospect that you all are sharing and you all are trying to get the business from, you know, I just have to look in one place because I'm keeping everything in one place. This is my, 
this is my what's the term we use in this industry i, I should know it should roll off my head right it, it should just roll off my my uh, tongue right now um single source of truth this is my sst it's my single source of truth that's the term that we <laughs> that's used heavily in the martech industry so when you know okay i'm not even bugging I, i've got the i've got to recall some information there's nothing like having to recall something needing to recall something and you don't know where it's at i've been there been there done that got the t-shirt even was paying a subscription to the club to where i had to recall something but man i just didn't know where to look versus you if you have a real estate crm as your single source of truth and you're committed to making it your single source of truth you know confidently with confidence i just have to look in this one place that's it i don't have to jump over here jump over there i'm not doing where in the world is carmen san diego you know this is not hide and go see i might jump it over the place i know exactly where to go because it's gonna it's gonna lie it's gonna exist right here because i'm disciplined and i'm committed to keeping it in this one place now i'm gonna let all my other competitors jump around and hopscotch through all the different databases their phones and their laptops and their ipads and their tablets and you know try to find it you know and searching this app and that app and this platform and that platform i just know i'm going to one place and be perfectly honest with you i wasn't that person i was not that guy even initially when i did for for a while it took me a while because i had to break myself out of the habit i had this <laughs> there were two habits i had a task a task thing in my phone that i'd used for years okay and now i've got this really awesome crm system that has everything and more on steroids that i could need to manage tasks for my contacts and I still could not break myself out of this, out of this habit of this task manager on my phone. And it cost me, it cost me. I know it, it absolutely cost me. I lost opportunities because I couldn't find things, came across it weeks later. Oh my goodness, I didn't do this follow-up. Well, I forgot I had stuff over here in, you know, in this, uh, in this um, little task widget on my phone that I have been conditioned to use for years. So it got painful. It wasn't until I actually felt the pain till I actually broke loose out of that. Um, that was the task part of it. Then there was also a reminders um, widget that, you know, all phones come with. And some of them have several reminders. And sometimes they're just so easy and so slick and this and that and whatever. Same scenario, lost opportunities. Wasn't until it started hurting and hurting business-wise, rather. You know, and that's not a good look. You know, when you fail to follow up. And it wasn't like habitual or whatever, but for, I mean, one is too many, you know, for me. One is too many, especially if they were referred to you. That's no bueno. No bueno, man. That's really bad. Really bad. You know, so, um, yeah, definitely broke out of that. And, you know, sometimes I look at it and you have those fond memories. Oh, that bell on my phone. Oh, that reminder. I remember you. It's so easy. I could just boom, boom. But nope, 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 nope. Not going to do that. I've got my single source of, source of truth. And that is my CRM. And try as you will. But I will never, ever move away from that. Okay. So, well, that's a conversation that I have with that reminder because it tries it tries to pull me back in like al pacino said in the godfather tries to pull me back in it tries to pull me back in but i'm not going back it's not happening let me give you another uh example as as far as how how a real estate crm gives you a competitive advantage so it, it has a way to what you'll find if you haven't started using it like what you'll find is and what I've seen in a lot of demos from real estate agents is like, they will have like a ranking system. And this is common because we all know it has nothing to do with the contact or the individual. It may be a ranking, let's say for a follow-up, right? So like, and it's a rank between A to D. So 
The A contacts, I need to reach out to them every two weeks. The B contacts, every month. The C contacts, every six months. And the D contacts, once a year. And they can program in their system. They'll program in their system and they'll have a framework developed for the frequency that each one of these grades represent, as I mentioned before. And so what will happen is the real estate CRM acts like an intelligent assistant. It reminds us, it will remind you at whenever intervals that it's been programmed to, to follow up with that person. And as you adjust their grade or if the grade remains the same, it will restart, you know? So then once that activity, once that communication is done, is completed, that cycle continues you unless you move. So if you move like a, a D to a, to an A, then that once a year, now you know, oh, oh yeah, this person is gonna hear from me every two weeks because their grade has been, or their rank, you know, has been changed, you know? And that's where it can act like that intelligent assistant for you. So no more writing, oh, call them in two weeks, call them this, just by, just by, just by changing that little field that field or that grade, let me just call it grade um, because we aren't actually, we're doing this on the podcast, but just by changing their grade, your system is going to automatically adjust and it's going to automatically notify you. So once you, and I, I know it happened for me, see, once, once you, and, and it's happened for thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of others who use this type of system in the CRM is you have the confidence, you know, nothing is going to fall through the cracks. And then finally, my favorite distinction of what separates a real estate CRM from an address book is how it, how it enriches your professional relationships, you know, because there's nothing worse or not worse, but nobody likes feeling like a number or a transaction. And when you're able to leverage the data, the information in your CRM to acknowledge people, to make them feel understood and appreciated. Trust me, they're gonna bond. That that facilitates a bond. When because when people feel understood, appreciated, and acknowledged, they bond. And having information, data at your fingertips, if you're disciplined. And if you're committed to making your CRM that single source of truth gives you that opportunity to access that information, to recall it at a moment's notice. So someone doesn't feel as if that we've all gone through it. Like I have to start from scratch again. I just have to restart and just reinform this person from the very beginning. You know, we've all been on those customer service lines when you're calling and it's like, I thought we covered this. Like we already talked about this before. You know, or and and that's just that may have to, that has to do with their transaction or the business component. But let's take it one step further on a personal level. You know, if you're if you're an individual who likes to observe and take notes genuinely and you may make a note of a family event, something positive, someone's name could be a pet's name, could be you know, uh, 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 daughter's getting married, you know, someone's moving, you know, just, just anything. And you're, and you're a, and you, and you want to recall that, or you want to follow up on that. You have the notes, you have the information there. And this is one thing that benefits us as small business owners, that these big tech giants that are seriously trying to use technology to displace and disrupt, not just the real estate industry, but most all small business, that's something they can never do. But the thing is like we can use technology to leverage that genuine human person to person. We can leverage that using technology, believe it or not. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Well, I hope that helps. Those are, uh, those are my three offerings as far as how a real estate CRM is not a glorified address book, you know? And if you want to find out more, uh, I've always mentioned, you know, definitely look out there. They're great ones out there. Take them for a test drive. Uh, we have Zoho over here. Uh, if you'd like to take Zoho for a test drive, 
I'll have a link down in the chat. I think on this episode, I may also have a link to Trainer Central, which is, um, well, it's a platform. Trainer Central is the platform that I use. We're just like a free course, a free class. And something I put up there like about a year ago for an event. And all it does, it, it walks you through how to sign up for Zoho. And it also has a link in there for a free 30 day trial. You don't, you don't have to use it. You don't have to use my link. You can go directly to Zoho. I think I also have a disclosure in the, in the chat. I'm also, or not in the chat, in the description, I'm also Zoho affiliate. So, you know, if you do decide to use the software, I may receive a compensation from Zoho, but again, feel free to just go directly to them. You don't have to use my link, but I digress back to the, um, the platform the uh, agentfreetrial.com. If you go there, I have a small little brief little course. It's just gonna walk you through how to get access to your to your, um, to your free trial, as well as the initial setup, the initial setting up. And I also have some resources in there that go a little further on setting up your system. Some stuff that I gathered that's on the internet because a lot of times folks are, okay, I've got this free account. Where do I start? Where did I go first? So. I kind of covered that. If you have any questions, just, you know, just follow up with me through that, through that platform, or you can email me, um, at the email that you see in the description here, or you find on YouTube. And I think I will end this episode here. Have I covered everything that I wanted to? I hope so. And again, people bear with me here. I'm getting started. This is new, but practice, practice, practice. It will get better. And I will see you on the next one. As always, it's Zoho for the win, baby. Talk to you soon.